like to formally welcome you to our first online faculty training workshop that we're hosting here for the Distance Learning Institute. Uh, and and I, I do want to preface this with this is a, a, a little bit experimental. Uh, you know, we, we have a list of workshops for this semester, but I think critical to the success of, this workshop, uh, of these workshops is your feedback. Uh, kind of knowing what you think we should be doing, maybe we don't address it here, maybe we address it in another session. But all, you know, I, I definitely want it to be a collaborative effort. Um, so any faculty members that participate, I, I want you to feel that this is your workshop. You know, that we're just what what can benefit you, uh, get the most out of your time, and, and the most for for you know, just helping you develop uh, your online courses. So we want to make sure that we're we're aligned with your goals and your aspirations. That being said, my name is Luis Alvarado. I'm the assistant director here at the Distance Learning Institute, uh, and I'd, I'd like to introduce the rest of my team. Hi, I'm Ariel St. Rose. I work as an academic educational technologist here at BLS. I'm Ron Rodriguez. I'm also an academic educational technologist. Uh, my name is Byron Maldonado. I am a senior program at, uh, coordinator. So I think it's great that we're presenting together. You know, that way you get to know our team, and this really is our team. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a small, tight-knit uh, group of uh, talented individuals. Uh, so you get to know all of us. And I, I, I like this format so that we can hopefully start a conversation with you. Uh, towards the end of this presentation, we hope that you'd be willing to maybe share some stories, some experiences, particularly regarding multimedia, which is the topic for this session. So we definitely like to get uh, uh, that conversation going. That being said, we'd like to start off talking a little bit about uh, the theory uh, behind using and utilizing multimedia. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have pictures in your online courses, maybe a few videos in your online courses, uh, but there's a pedagogical method, right? There's a pedagogical foundation that explains that providing those images, providing those videos actually enhances <clears throat> learning. And, and that, that sort of theory comes from this particular gentleman here. He's a psychologist out of UC Santa Barbara, Richard E. Mayer. He sort of be, is the seminal thinker when it comes to cognitive uh, thinking and learning, cog cognitive learning in the use of multimedia. So he developed what are 10 principles to adhere to when you are inputting uh, multimedia. Uh, and, and we can kind of help with that process. So if you have a video, you have some images that you want to upload into your course, we can uh, collaborate with you on how best to input it in the course. Because you, obviously you can't just put images or videos anywhere you want. It has to make sense. It has to make sense with the topic that's being learned. So, uh, and I know you can read this quote, but I'd like to read it to you as well. People learn better from graphics and words than from words alone. You can help people learn better if you include appropriately designed graphics and in instructional presentations. And that, that key word being appropriately designed graphics, whether we find them from external avenues or we create them in-house. We have those capabilities, and we want to let you know that, that we do have those capabilities to, to support you. So one of the first elements we want to talk about, self-portraits. So um, since we have, um, I've I'm, I'm been working as a photographer for like the past 20 years. I'm working here in DLI, and we want to uh, provide you with that service. So important to have a self-portrait. I can uh, sketch all the time with you. Uh, and, the, and the information that we have provided is uh, off our information. You can uh, contact us uh, with any questions or any, uh, anything that you needed, uh, any service that you provided. And one of these is uh, <clears throat> uh, taking a professional uh, portrait. So I'm uh, willing to schedule any time with you if you need it. If you need a photo for your course, you need a photo for any book that you're publishing, for anything that you needed, I can schedule all time. We're in campus. The campus is beautiful. We have a lot of uh, locations that we can use. It takes only like from five to ten minutes of your time. Uh, we do the photos, I edit it, and, uh, and and you can use it for any anything that you need us to use it for. Those are some uh, samples of uh, photos that, that I have done in the past. We use uh, the two and the size for uh, some training that we did uh, a few months ago. Uh, photos has the middle one uh, using the background in case that uh, you need a special request for any uh, any any place, so we can uh, do that as well. So so feel free to contact me if you need it uh, anytime. And you know this is a wonderful first step, and, and obviously has this this multiple use 
uh, that Byron alluded to. You know, it doesn't just have to be for your online course. It could be for other profiles, your, your, curri your curriculum vitae. Um, you can add it there. So it's something that you can utilize right now that we provide, and we want to let you know uh, that we have those services for you. So definitely make sure to schedule time with Byron if, if you're interested in that. Another element, another multimedia element that we'd like to talk to you uh, about that you should consider incorporating within your online course, regardless of what topics. I know everyone here teaches different topics, and they might feel like, oh, you know, I don't feel like this material is useful. But there is, I, 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 I do believe that there is a 360 video, some sort of VR video out there that is probably relevant to your topic, regardless of the topic that it is that you teach. So one database that I'd like to showcase for you is, is, is GoPro has a variety of videos uh, created already by users. And, and, and if you're unfamiliar with GoPro, you know, you attach it to your head or, or your body, and it sort of gives you that first-person perspective uh, video. And for instance, this Beyond Cambodia, <coughs> my thinking of, of utilizing this video might be in a uh, a religious, a religion course, maybe an Asian spirituality course. You're talking about the temples uh, that are in uh, uh, Cambodia, and you like students to sort of experience being there without actually having to fly and be there, and maybe talk about you know I've what never been they, to Southeast Asia. What do they I notice in the video? What they see? Cambodia to meet some locals and soak up some culture. Just mute it for a second. And, and, and you know, and I think this could create a great conversation piece. And videos like this can create great conversation piece within your online courses to sort of, uh, you know, show, show that you want them to realize that this topic, whatever it is, whether it's religion, business, uh, uh, cinema, it, it has it, it has a greater meaning in, in, in the greater scope of the of the world. So that was one of the examples. And these videos aren't actually 360 videos, but they're that first person perspective. So it's similar to that sort of VR concept of, of them feeling like they're, they're there. The next is National Geographic. Now they have an absolute plethora of 360 videos and they're all labeled here for, for, for 360. You'll see that little number and that's how you know it's a 360 video. And for instance, we have a world-class marine biology campus here at UM. And I could just imagine if they ever, if, you know, if they're ever interested in teaching online, there's a lot of great videos and, and, and topics that they can utilize. And what's great about 360 videos is even if you don't have your VR set, you know, I don't have one, uh, I can still rotate in the space. And I think this can be a very powerful tool. It, if you can find, yes. Oh, it makes you dizzy. Oh, I, I think I go too fast sometimes when I. Well, it's good to know. Yes, it's good to know, and we want to let you know this is available. This is free to use. Um, see if there's anything available, or if you want, if you're curious enough, we can look for you. Yes. So I have a. I actually have an in-person class of um, Erasmus kids in their 107 courses, and um, are they able to? I mean, what, what's the distinction with the VR uh, stuff? You know, I know, like in the Boatwood Button Studio, they have the the equipment. How would that look? What would be the difference between what you just did and having the VR? Well, I, the difference would be that with the VR set and watching that video, instead of having to scroll with the mouse, you can, just it's cool, you can literally just turn. Ah, okay. It's more of an immersion. Sorry. You're immersed because you also have sound, too. Uh, yeah. So that, that would be the main difference, and I definitely recommend utilizing those tools if they're available to you. Uh, in the one-bike studio. Can you guys create these videos as well? So that's something we've talked about. Um, uh, our artist in residence, Byron, uh, does have the equipment, but we're talking about how to make that feasible. And I think if there's enough interest, uh, then we can, we can see about what we can do to kind of have an in-house 360 studio as well. And he did do a, a walkway to the building here to come in for our international students who get here, but they don't know where to find the front door, things like that. He did a virtual walkthrough that they can actually find their way to the front door from any parking lot. So we're playing with it. So give us yeah. some time and we're going to try and hear what your needs are. If you can give us a project, yes, that's a great way for us to, to learn fast. Sure. Yeah, I start with a simple uh, training of, a, of a, a map of the building. 
because uh, a lot of people they, they don't know where uh, is DCIE uh, and, and so having in our website I mean it's a, we have a, I have some people asking me like oh, where's your office because I never been in that building in Allen Hall so put it in the uh, in the 360 um, so that way they can see around so I start from three points and make a map of uh, of the building pretty much and since UM has well Google has um, adapted that all the, the wall path in the in, in UM. So you can connect each path to the building. So if you are in Google Map and you're in front of the building, you're gonna see that it's a little line so where you can go in and you jump into the building. Mm -hmm. So it's a I mean the, that's only uh, still images but you can create one with a with a video. So I mean I have the tools I have uh, I know how to create it. And, uh, and I mean, we're working for to provide those services as well. So something to consider. If you really see wanting maybe to tour something here in Miami locally, mm -hmm. uh, definitely let us know about it and we'll be happy to, to try to make that happen for you. And the last kind of uh, 3D visualization I'd like to talk about <clears throat> in my portion here is uh, this, this brainfacts.org. Now, I, I know this might be more for psychology, um, and neuroscience, things of that nature, but I think it also displays the, this doesn't have to be a brain, right? It can be something else, whatever topic pertains and, and makes sense for you, and then having this sort of visualization where students can click on an image and, and be given information on what that particular part does, yeah, I, I think can be really important, and being able to move it around, I think provides a, 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 you know, a unique element that really enhances online. So some examples we want to show you as far as 360 and 3D. Hi, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about VR and what it can do for your courses. Um, for those of you who don't really know what VR is or who aren't sure, VR is essentially a kind of technological development that allows users to immerse themselves into a computer-generated 3D world. So more recently, it's being used as an educational tool because it can promote both active learning and creativity, which are essential for an effective educational experience. And even in a study that was conducted by Yumi and Nielsen, they found that users were engaged for 32% longer with 3D content than they were with 2D content. So you can imagine the possibilities that we could have if we were to sort of make available to us a user-friendly VR repository that we so these are the two examples of the repositories I found. The redwood forest was thriving here in California for millions of years. And then within a few generations, we harvested 95% of the ancient forest that once characterized the California coast. Hello, I'm Sam. So yes. Do you, want to, do you want to show the other example? Or? Yeah, so this is just an example of Samsung I think is more accessible to you guys because anyone can go on there. But I also found a really fascinating example of an online university who actually Took, they partnered with another company to create this VR repository that's available to them through Blackboard. So, for example, if you type in things into the search bar like heart model, you'll get something like this, where you can see the being heart, students can move it around. Um, and if you click on any of the numbers, it'll tell you what part of the heart that is and the, the function, basically. And I think this could work, work in tandem, right? I think if there's enough interest uh, from you, the faculty, in really having a repository in-house of 360 videos, I, I think we're more emboldened to sort of then preach for your, your needs uh, and to meet those needs. And I, I, I think this is definitely something, as you can see, there's some nat uh, a Natural Geographic 360 videos in the repository. Uh, I, I think it's something that could be beneficial across the university if maybe very easily at a touch of a button you have access to, to videos you can immediately embed within your Blackboard course. So, so some, some things to consider and, and really you know, advocate to your fellow colleagues as well uh, if they're interested in, in having this repository and maybe doing some 360 work. Yes? So 
Sick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Have a notice for the students. Some people might. I'm unusually like I can't remember on campus at all. But um, there are some students who wouldn't be able to watch this, you know, because it would make them sick. But um, if you're teaching an in-person class, I guess what you could do is go on Blackboard and put links to these sites on Blackboard. Yes. Would that be how you do it? Yeah, so if I'm going to do content, add content, and then you just do the link aspect of it. Yes, yeah, so there's a web, yeah, so if yes. you find it on the web, there's a add a web link yeah. option in Blackboard for yes. if you have a face to face course. So you can I, add that, yeah, I know, yeah. just add the URL and then it'll take you to that video or whatever. And that's the way I would approach doing it for your, your face to face courses. Would we find maps? For example, uh, sometimes I teach a class on Irish studies and in the west of Ireland, and I would like people to be able to go to the west coast and go to some of the rural rooms, and they can look at it, I might be able to. So do you think these places, I could look it up and just see? Absolutely, absolutely, and, and you know, worst case scenario is, like Byron was talking about, it's going to have Google Earth. So even if you just want to oh, utilize Google the Google Earth feature to kind of showcase. And just click on the link at the top. Yeah, the Earth. Sort of, yes. so, so you can see, you can even do that, but I, I would venture to say there, chances are that there is a video yeah. out there already but, created. But somebody's gone to yeah. this ancient monastery <laughs> yes. and yeah. strolled around. Places are kind of the most common VR videos that we'll see, especially of ancient ruins and different countries, stuff like that. Good, okay. There, so it's, yeah. it's Samsung VR, probably? Yes. Or National Geographic 360. So you got YouTube. YouTube can, it can or just YouTube. Just YouTube can find a lot of stuff, and then Samsung and GoPro are the uh, two okay. company-specific websites that have their own repositories of videos that they can <coughs> utilize. Uh, and I, you know, and that did uh, make me want to add one point. Something interesting, a project that's happening, you know, especially specifically in the Middle East, you know, because of the war. A lot of uh, monuments and, and different different ancient ruins are being destroyed. Uh, there's a big project to utilize uh, drones uh, to do some of these 360 videos of, uh, of these, you know, ancient temples and, and, and sort of uh, the ruins and, and collect them before they're gone forever. And so I, I think that's that's very fascinating that that this is not just obviously a good tool. It's fun, but it could very well be the only way we remember certain things in the future. You know, because we won't have it anymore. So something to consider. So maybe we could do a three, a 360 video of your office before it gets. <laughs> All right. And the next thing we want to talk about about incorporating this is a service that we provide here, and we can set up for you is the personalized intro videos. All right. So one of the questions that I always get from professors is when they're building their courses, like you know, how can I be make it more interactive? How can I get you know my students more engaged and have them feel like it's more one on one, just like in a traditional classroom setting? So one of the things that we offer is that we can do is instead of just writing, and because we have a setup in Blackboard that your course has an introduction, instead of just typing one out, we actually have like a professional video that Byron will be able to film for you and we'll post that for you. I got a couple of examples that I set up and just pay attention mostly to how and where it's located because we have different options that you can use. So I believe this is a philosophy one Hi, this is course. Chris Rogan, you're a teacher of the Superhuman Mind course. And this is module one. In module one, we're going to look at people who have acquired amazing talents and abilities after brain injuries. One case we're going to look at is the case of, of D. D. And if you notice, as we walk around campus, that was the Shalala Center. So that's just one example. Like we were saying, it's a beautiful campus, a great place. You know, you don't have to just do it in your office. Um, or do it even outdoors, you know, you can use a place like the Shalala Center we set up a time. And, you know, Byron can set up even with cutscenes if that's something that you're interested in, if you notice that I had one. Uh, the next one, I'm sure Dr. West is familiar with this one, <laughs> uh, is another one that she decided to do it in her own lab where she teaches, that's her comfortable setting. So, Hello, in module one of human geography, we will be learning about the discipline of geography and what it is that geographers do in their everyday life. Today, we might wonder, is it just math and mapping that geographers work on? Well, in this module, you will learn that it's not, that's only a small portion of what your geographers do in their everyday life. So you'll be getting into the 
So as you can see, she uses her classroom where she teaches it on a daily basis as her comfort zone to do her introductory class. Um, and she has an introduction video for every module, And she's right? got an introductory video for every module, being that there's eight modules in the course. She has eight intros. Um, the last one we have, being them like sports oriented, we have a KIM course, and he used where our trophy room here is here on campus as his backdrop for his Welcome to module one. In this module, you'll learn the basics of what the sports industry entails. For most of you, this will be your first taste of understanding the sports industry. You will immediately find this is a career that is rewarding, exciting, and very unique. I feel that an important part of this module is your introduction videos. So as you can see, everyone uses a different backdrop, what, you know, what's more comfortable for them, what works for their course, but it also provides that engagement piece. And now students are not just reading about you know, what my interest is going to be, they're seeing who my professor is, they're getting to meet them, they're getting the more hands-on of how it's, and it helps the students, it helps you as well to develop that relationship with your students and, you know, and make the course more engaging. So that's one of the other things that we offer here. Uh, Byron can set up a time with you whenever you want to film, pick a location and a time, and I think you have a little more info. You were talking about like maybe how long it takes to do it. Yeah, so the, uh, to film those videos, it takes uh, about like uh, from one hour and a half to two hours. And uh, the important thing is like if you are not used to uh, be filmed, because uh, I know that some professors they don't like to be filmed or be in front of the cameras. Uh, I work with you to be comfortable enough to talk in front of the cameras. I don't bring too much equipment. I bring enough equipment. We go through the through the video. We we uh, write the script, and uh, and everything is gonna be easy for you to be in the camera. And then you want to be more and more in the cameras and it's going to be more easy and easy for you to do Can it. Can hire actors to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's very important for you to be comfortable. So uh, I work with the, with the professors and, uh, and, and, and make, it, I make it very easy for, for you to, to be comfortable in front of the camera. So I have two questions. Um, the two hours, is that for all the intro, all the intro videos for all eight modules, or would that be just for like one? Well, um, well, usually uh, the intro the intro modules are pretty short. Right. Uh, we are talking about uh, two yeah, minutes, yeah, minute yeah. and a half. So because yeah, I need to revamp mine, so I right. want to see how long that would take. Yeah, I mean uh, for eight modules, I mean we can do it in uh, in two hours. But I say like it's two minutes. We do like uh, maybe uh, two three takes. Depends how good you are. So first take is, is a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, half an hour. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it, it depends. So, but okay. sometimes, like, uh, yeah. the first take is hard, then the second one is more easy, and then for the third one on, maybe we, we do the half an hour. So, it depends on okay. uh, of who, how you how you feel uh, uh, talking to the cameras. Okay, because usually, I mean, I'm, I actually took over a class from somebody else, and so they're all her videos on there, but now I've been teaching the class for a couple of years, and um, what I typically do is I just kind of do my laptop every semester, right. and I didn't do it this semester. I, I mean, I haven't done it in a while because it's just too awkward. I just write my own intro, and then I try to meet with people, so we, we do have that face-to-face. Mm -hmm. -face. Um, but my other question is, um, one of the things I've done, and I did this a few years back, is to have students kind of record their own, like, welcome, like, on the intro of the module, so then I get a sense of who they are and their classmates. But it seems a little cumbersome, and some of them aren't necessarily very comfortable doing that. And so I'm wondering if there's any, because I think that would really help, especially in a smaller class, to establish rapport, not just with me, but with each other, because they are responding so much to each other's work. Um, is there anything that you have or that you could recommend, other than them kind of using their own laptops or their cell phones, to make them more comfortable with that? And, Getting them, getting buy-in from them to do that. Uh, I think I mean one of the sources that we have here on campus is that one button uh, studio mm -hmm. that they are uh, alone in one room, and I think they can do multiple takes until okay. they feel comfortable until they're gonna see the, the video right away. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's pretty hard to to record your own video. Um, yeah. Even for me, I am taking uh, one of the classes of philosophy, and I need to do introduction video. Even that I do photography and uh, filming, right. I do videos. For me, it's pretty hard to put my phone in front of my face and, and record my, my 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 own video. But I think if uh, if the one button studio is mm -hmm. not 
comfortable enough for, for them. Uh, if the students need to record it, I mean, they can they can talk to us and we can uh, yeah, that'll be, help that'll them. Be uh, too much work. I mean, if it's, a, it's a small, it's a small uh, <laughs> class, uh, we, we can uh, accommodate it. But I think that one ballot studio is, is that one. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm trying be. to think because I know that's available, but also, you know, a lot of them are working professionals, yes. they're not on campus, the only time we could get here would be in the evenings, and, you know, they're working, true, they are yeah. working remotely. So, um, yeah, okay. So, yeah. if you think of anything, yeah, I mean, it's just a way to... Did, did you want to add? I, but I wanted to piggyback, because that was actually my question, too, is, um, I have them do an intro video, and I also have them do one of their assignments later in the semester as a video, but I don't give any sort of guidance, so I get really variety in terms of the videos yeah. but I was wondering number one are there faculty because I would love them to do assignments on video like I'd actually because you know they write like I teach Caribbean religion it's 300 level they write good papers like I almost wish like oh if they could present this and like share each other's work publicly versus me just grading something that only I read so I was wondering a if faculty do video assignments and b maybe could you do like a little module tutorial on how to shoot yeah, a good yeah. video and yeah. you could drop it in yeah. every online course yeah. so yeah. that I mean assignments like that like yeah I can share. I can make a, a little uh, tip sheet of uh, how they can take the, the, a better video because uh, lighting is very important mm -hmm. and even if you are like in an apartment you don't I have enough do space video. You can do it uh, with the yeah. lighting of uh, your window. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make something uh, for for all of you to have your microphone near your mouth. Yeah, it's like telling them stuff like don't put the camera. Yeah. It like show them because I think the teachers like, so not good. looking up their nose. Best practices. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's a great that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah, actually, I, I can put something together and I can share it with all faculty. Because so I think that would be good. good. So I have actually done that not in this course that I'm teaching, but another online course and actually in an in-person course. Um, but the online course, I had them do their final persuasive presentation. Um, they had to record themselves because that was part of one of the learning outcomes was kind of the... Yeah, because I wanted to mix it up a little. I'm, so, yeah. Right, so it was, a re it was remediation. They were taking mm -hmm. their final project and, and presenting it. You know, they had to use some kind of slide slideshow yeah. um, and present. They had to dress up like in their suits. And so it was very formal. And, and I was very much <laughs> like, as to what I wanted. And they were mostly okay. Um, but I think having a tutorial would be very, very sure. helpful yeah, cool as well. And also, mm -hmm. just because um, I'm designing a new course in the spring, um, and Brian, Brian filmed me for eight modules in two hours. I think it took like two or three hours. And mine were like 10 to 12 minutes long. But I also did mine very, I don't know if you all like this or not. I did it formally. So I didn't, mm -hmm. I, I spoke like I'm speaking to you all right now. So if I screwed up, I just screwed up because that's what happens in classrooms. So I kind of. Yeah. Oh, I didn't have takes. That's, not, that's real. That's yeah. Real. Um, but in our the class I'm going to be developing in the spring, I happen to be teaching the class in the classroom. So I asked if Byron could come in and film me while I'm lecturing, so he could be like in the back. So for some of the modules, the students could like feel like they're in the classroom. Um, and I think it's okay because they'll just see the backs of students' heads. So I don't think waivers will be an issue, but yeah. of course we'll check with all the kids. <laughs> but I just like just another way if if you're giving a talk in one of your in the flesh, right, incarnate classes um, that could go into an online course. For me, I just thought it would be a great idea to have him film me teaching. Not every module, so it's mixed up, but a couple of modules so that they kind of feel like they're in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like that if you're a little hesitant in front of the camera, to me, like, once you're in front, you're going to forget about that camera, mm -hmm. right? Because, because you're more right. focused on the kids in the room than him discreetly in the back filming yes. you. It's a great yeah. point. And I did hear that uh, someone alluded to, and I think it was you, uh, Michelle, that the, the uh, streamlining the process. That I think you get submissions there all over the place when you do have those video submission assignments. My suggestion there is maybe streamline it so that it Everyone has to create a YouTube channel. All the students have access to a YouTube channel. They can make those videos private. And so that way, every submission is just a YouTube link that you view, that students, other students can view. And, and so it's streamlined. So every video submission is going to be the same. And then we can create instructions on, on, on how to do that if, if, if that process. I wish, because believe it or not, um, Blackboard used to have video everywhere. So recording yourself on Blackboard was just as simple as a button and then submitting it to that button. It's no longer available. I don't know if future iterations are going to have that. Uh, but I think having a YouTube channel and using it, using, utilizing it that way so they're all similar 
could solve that problem because I know you probably get different files. Sometimes you get a link. Sometimes you get something you have to download. Sometimes it's just a video. Yeah, it's a mess. Sometimes yes. I, get, I can open them on my PC but not on my Mac. Yeah. Or, 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 so, so maybe if we streamline, we create instructions for you awesome. uh, to create a YouTube channel and how to upload the link, and they know that they have to give you the link. It's not an embedded video or a mm -hmm. video file. It's a right. link, that, and then they, you can watch the videos that way. I think that might help with that particular that situation. Would be great. Thanks. So definitely, I guess providing instructions on videos is definitely yeah. our key. Especially from the student side, because mm -hmm. it does that does increase not just their, I mean, it's not their participation, like what they should wear. Like some videos are like, oh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, know. Okay, but that's even like on site. Like I talked to someone, she's like wearing like her bathrobe and like yeah, yeah. like this, but yeah. you, you know, when you have the instructions, yeah. the instructions ready, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we can share the uh, for the email card. I'll leave my contacts. Please. Uh, so okay, personalized intro videos. You don't have them, you should get them, and we'll we'll make it easy for you to to get them up there. Some additional tools we want to talk to you about. So uh, I work a lot on uh, a lot of a lot of uh, my time with, uh, with Photoshop. I use uh, uh, pretty much all the Adobe uh, Adobe software that we that we have available. And uh, I don't know if uh, if all of you know that the Adobe is free for uh, faculty and staff and uh, for UM. Uh, you can uh, download all the 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 Creative Cloud, including uh, InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom. Uh, Audition for audio, um, Illustrator for uh, graphics, Photoshop for photos. Uh, we have uh, Illustrator for graphics as well. And Audition for audio. Right here. Yeah. Uh, so these ones that I am listening here, those are some tools that you have available in your phone. So these, uh, these different applications, uh, you can uh, download it and, and, and you can have it and, uh, and play it in your phone. All these applications are connected to your Adobe Creative Cloud account that we have with UM. Oh. So if you are working something, let's say like you're on a trip and you see something interesting and you want to put some text, so we can have a, you can go to the, just to the next page. Yeah, yeah, know. absolutely. So it's called Fix, uh, Mix, and what's the third one? To the, next the next one you got. So we have Adobe Photoshop Express. Okay. This is one of the applications that you can, uh, that you can uh, use. You take a photo, you can enhance. The, 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 the image, and you have a different tools where you can put filter, you can crop, you can uh, adjust the light, you can uh, patch some, uh, if you want to remove some uh, objects from the photo, you can uh, remove the red eye if you take a photo with your flash, you can add some text. So this, uh, this application is very useful because it's very easy to use. You just take the photo, import it in uh, the application, and you start playing with that, and it's just one click, one click, one click, and you move forward. And you can, uh, you can uh, send it through uh, to your email, you can save it in your phone, and uh, you can share it as well in, uh, in any social media. So this one is pretty like a kind of like a Instagram kind of uh, uh, application. The next one is a kind of a combination of, uh, of these two. With this one is like, uh, if you have a photo taken, if you don't come in to have your own photo uh, taken, a portrait with your phone, you can go with this application and you can uh, you can uh, uh, do the. Um, you can enhance your, your uh, skin in a, in, a, in a photo. You can uh, you can adjust with light. You can uh, distort it. You can you can uh, heal the, the skin. You can smooth your skin, and you can change the different lights. Uh, this is an Adobe Photoshop fix. It's kind of like the same combination with this one. In this one, you can do the same thing. You can uh, share. You can uh, download the photos to your phone or send it in your phone. You can uh, you can send it through email or to any social media application that you have. The last one, Adobe Photoshop Mix. This one is a little more to be uh, a little more uh, creative. So you have a uh, different filters where you can combine two photos at once. And uh, all this you are doing with your phone. You download the application. You you put one photo. Uh, in the third layer, in the second uh, photo, in the second layer, and both of the uh, of the images is gonna combine, depend on what you want to create. So I'm just showing this one because those applications are in, uh, available in your phone. And you just sign in with your uh, UM credentials, and uh, you can uh, work from your phone. You can send it to the credit, uh, cloud, and you can open it in your computer. You have the same software in uh, in, in your computer. So 
those are pretty uh, useful uh, applications that that are available are available for faculty and staff for UM. And uh, I think we should utilize because you have a photo that you take somewhere and you want to show it, but the photo doesn't have good light. <coughs> so you can adjust all these little things with your phone. And it's like, like I said, it's one click. You adjust. It's not that complicated. You don't need to be professional to do to use it to use this application. So that very uh, great. If you go back to one uh, yes. one slide, this one. Um, I have a sample here of uh, um, images that I that I cropped. So like if you are, if you have a uh, if you have a request that you're working in some project and you don't know how to uh, deal with that request that people are doing with the image, uh, sometimes they request, oh, I need a photo as uh, 300 DPI, uh, 150 or 272 DPI. I need it for for web version. I need it for print version. So sometimes it gets confused if you're not familiar with all this uh, uh, with all this like graphics for web or for, for printing. So here's a simple example of DPI that is a dots per inch. This is how the, the computer is going to look at the photo, how it's compressed the image. So you have the same image in the same side with a different uh, resolution. So for you to have an idea when they ask you for a screenshot, a, a screen uh, image, so that it, they mean that it's going to be a, a 72 DPI. and uh, it decreased the size, but when you when you look this uh, image in, in your computer, it's gonna have a good resolution. It's gonna be good for web use, but not for printing. So you cannot combine this one for let's say like a, this one for printing or this one for the web because this one is gonna be a big file. So if you are not familiar with uh, with this <coughs> kind of conversions you feel free to contact me and I can help you to do this kind of uh, simple cropping to enhance, to do any kind of preference that you need. If you get stuck with something that you need to send right away, you can call me and I can guide you how to, how to work uh, in, uh, with this uh, graphics. And you know, to go back a little bit uh, of what Byron was talking about with some of these applications that you can download on your phone, I think it really uh, provides a great opportunity for spur of the moment learning. Now, I think a lot of you are doing great research, going on great trips, maybe at a great conference, uh, having a great conversation, and maybe you want to connect your students to what's going on right now, right there. And, and you, feel, you should feel empowered to use your phone to take a picture of the moment, record the moment, or, or however you like to do it, and share with your students that spur of the moment opportunity. And I, I think that can really go a long way to, to personalize the learning uh, within the online class. And I think, oh, uh, another example we wanted to talk about was Adobe Spark. Uh, free to use for your students. Uh, there, you've alluded a little bit to maybe research papers. You, you, you might not want to have a course full of research papers as far as that's the assignment to turn in. Uh, another good option besides video might be asking them to do an Adobe Spark page. And what that allows the students to do is, is pretty easily, you know, with click of a button, everything's there as far as menu items is create projects that are um, a little bit more eye-popping. It, it's, it's pretty easy to add photos um, and to make this sort of similar page where you scroll and you're, you're taken to different uh, elements of that page. Uh, and I think we do have an examples link that we'll share with you afterwards of actual student submissions uh, via Spark. So you can see what students have submitted here at UM using this tool and kind of hopefully get inspired and we can work together to, to maybe create that assignment in your course. Yeah, this is a, this yeah. a, a Adobe Spark is one of the software that is free for faculty and, and, and the students and staff for UM. Uh, it's, very to use, it's very easy to use. You have a, a, a lot of uh, options for fonts. You can combine uh, images with uh, and videos in the same. And I have seen uh, some uh, professors in UM that they've been using that uh, requesting to the students to create a project specific for that and the sparks. And the presentation is really amazing. So it's a uh, it's great, great tool to have. Yeah. Absolutely. If you need more, we, one of our faculty members is doing a civic engagement course and they work with the Butler Center um, and the students create spark pages for each of their organizations. So I can ask her if you need more examples. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're really fantastic. I mean, the, and, and Spark is super easy. 
Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes. Very good. I, yeah. I believe they come uh, to do training site every year. Uh, IT bring the, mm -hmm. the person who creates all these parts. Yeah. Uh, and they come to California and they go through everything. Uh, Spark has uh, three different uh, uh, functions. So you can do a page, you can create a, a post, or you can uh, put it in social media. And you can create the what is the, it was the web page, the post, and it's like a, a, video. a video. It is. Yeah. It is a Spark video. You have three different options that you can use. Uh, Does it can it merge with um, PowerPoint? Yeah. What you can do is uh, that you can create uh, Adobe Sparks, and you can uh, create. You can. Is this is going to be in the web page. And you, oh, you're going to provide go you a share link where you can embed it in, the, in your PowerPoint. So you can open it through PowerPoint to the, to the embedded uh, link. That's a way that you can share this at all. Because everything is, uh, is online. It's a web-based uh, uh, software. So, you don't, you, so if you're giving a talk in class, you could go online and just go to Adobe Sparks and pull up the page and show it? If you have your profile, yes, you create uh, you create your presentation in the lower parts. You open uh, your so it could replace PowerPoint. In some way, yes, it's a little more uh, dynamic. It's uh, great great for presentations, mm -hmm. and it's pretty easy to use. Like it's uh, pretty simple. It's not that complicated. You don't need to have any. Uh, I mean, a little bit of training if you want to, but it's it's not. It's pretty easy. It's, yeah, and if you're interested, again, that's what we're here for. We're here to ease that transition. So if you'd like to start up an assignment or project, we can we can work with you to, to set it up for you so that you know for future courses you, you have that assignment available. Um, and and that, that was really the purpose of this uh, presentation, uh, this particular workshop today, is to kind of show you that you can be innovative, you can add some cool things in your course, and you don't have to break the bank, the bank to do it. Uh, we have these services available to you. Um, you know, hopefully you find an opportunity to utilize us. Uh, and not every single, I will allude that not every single workshop will be a presentation style. Uh, I, we do plan, except in fact, the very next uh, workshop we have, if I can plug uh, in, is the, is the Collaborate session. And so what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to create your own Collaborate room, how to uh, set up recording, and maybe, you know, depending on the, the level of the class, maybe we can uh, talk about how to do different things like polling, and posing questions to your students throughout a collaborate session, and that will be a little bit more hands-on. So it's going to be a mix of workshops. Some of these are going to be a little more presentation, showcasing what we have to offer you. Others will be a little bit more hands-on training. And, and, and like I mentioned earlier, it's ultimately your decision as, as far as what you would like this to be. 